Hello, my name is Jason Goodwin and this is my first attempt at a video on YouTube to help to share some of my learnings with, uh, with other people. This tutorial is going to be about using IntelliJ without the mouse. So how to navigate around the project, um, use all of the plugins that you're, that you're looking at using, essentially anything you want to do in the IDE, how to be able to, to do it, and if this tutorial doesn't cover it, how to be able to figure out how to do it for yourself. In the IDE right now, I have a Scala project. It's called Smoke. It's an open source HTTP server that we built at mDialog. I doesn't matter what language you're using. I'm just going to show you anything that's general to, to any language and maybe a few of the pieces that are you know, more specific to the, the plugin for the language that you're using, such as refactorings. But essentially, I'm going to break this up into two sections. We're going to first look at how to navigate around in the IDE. So, you know, jumping between project and code. And we're also going to then look at just a few shortcuts in the editor that I find I personally use quite a lot. Let's begin just by first hopping into the IDE here and looking at enter action. This is the shortcut that's going to let you discover anything that you want to do. If I hit Command Shift A, it will let me start to type and find anything that I would like to execute. So again, that's Command Shift A. All the other sh all the other functions that we look at today, we're going to actually just discover by by pressing this. So I'll show you the shortcuts on the screen just by using this command. If we want to find find, for example, or find a path. We can you know, very quickly, easily look up that, that command and then execute the find. And you know, we haven't touched the keyboard yet, so um, now we can you know, look for, for something in the code. And escape will always bring you back to the, to the code that you're looking at. So now we can kind of see how we can look up the command that we're looking for. Um, you know, if you want to go to the project window, you can see there, command 1 will get you to the project window. That's the, the piece on the left where you can navigate through the files here. So we can, you know, open something up. And then, again, we're still over here, so if we hit escape, then we will be able to, uh, to get back to the code easily. Okay, moving on. Um, we're just going to look at navigation via via finding. So we're going to look at first how to find a class by name. So if we want to find headers, header, headers, yeah. This is just the trait that we were looking at a second ago. Command N, again. Go to class by name. It's Command N, header. And we can also do that with files as well. So if we're not able to, um, if we're not able to find a class because the file has no classes, for example, a configuration file, then we can um, we can go to file by name, well, it's the same thing. It's command shift, and then, so you have the shift as well. And then, for example, you can see that I've been searching for a comp file, so I can go to the comp file. This is type type safe config file, it's similar to a properties file, but it's just tiered a little bit differently, um, more like JSON. So now we've covered a few of the pieces of how to get around by being able to find actions, like jumping in the project window, getting back to the code, um, you know, navigating by name by either file or class to to close an editor window we'll just look it up again command shift A we can uh, close with option F4 command F4 rather and you can close all the editor tabs so if you notice, that one actually doesn't have a shortcut attached to it. So 
In order to execute that one quickly, easily, you would actually have to find it by name. But whenever you're using another shortcut, just take note of the shortcut and try to use that next time. You can, you know, you can close other op windows as well, as you saw, I closed the project window there. So that will help you um, keep your IDE in control while you're working away. We're just going to go back to the project here, and we're going to open a file. Um, maybe actually, I'll, oh yeah, I, I'm actually going to jump to the, the finder. Um, if I want to do that, I want to use a previous search. Um, you know, we could, we could find... Finder, I can't find it. So how do I get down there? Um, the the switcher is the next piece that I'll just cover very quickly. The switcher lets you um, navigate between any anything that's open or that has been open. You can see some older files here that we've looked at. So if you hit Control Tab, um, that will bring up the switcher. I'm not too sure if it's yeah switch task. No, that's for actually. For tasks. I don't know, I think that there's no, no way to open it from the, the actions, but control tab, this will be another very commonly used um, feature for yourself, I'm sure it is for me. So you can jump back and forth, so it will let you, um, just by hitting control and tab, switch back and forth between two files, so the last two files you've looked at, it will bounce back and forth between them. Uh, you can go up or down, so you, you hold control and then just tap tab, and then by hitting tab you can go forward by hitting shift tab you can go back while still holding down the control button so you can go to the project for example um, you can also just hit the numbers or letters so if I want to look at the event log we can see that just by hitting control tab and then by hitting A I open the event log changes you know we can do that. So your history that's maintained inside the um, inside the IDE to do so any like fix me to do's in the code base you can pull them up really quickly that will help you uh, you know get around a little bit quicker you don't have to know all the shortcuts for getting to all of the windows a lot of them won't have shortcuts for example SPT console is a plugin so that's not going to have any it's not necessarily going to have um, a shortcut unless you've assigned something SPT console you can see here um, so next we're actually going to start to get into the editor just a little bit more um, I'm going to I'm going to go back to our trait headers let's use navigate to class so command n headers and now I want to look at any implementations so we'll, we can look that up. You can see here implementations is command was it command control B? I always get confused about this one. Uh, command option B. So this will show you anything that's inheriting from this this class. A trade is like an abstract class that can be used for mixed ins mixins in Scala. So just think of it like an abstract class if you're coming from another language. You know that it's going to have things inheriting from it. Um, so we can see here headers, request, response are both um, inheriting this. You can see some, some things from test context popping up as well. We can check out the request here. Um, I think we can look at a UML image actually to uh, Yeah, request is not showing the it extends from headers, but um, you know that's just some of the other plugins that are around. Um, that one, that one's just command option U, but you you have to have it installed. Um, you need the uh, ultimate version of IntelliJ, I believe. But not to worry about that. Um, I did just want to show you how to jump to implementations. You can also jump to declarations. So here we can see the val host, for example. Um, that's just like any variable. We'll try to find a usage of it. Um, there. So hit escape to go back to the code. We're, we're just going to put our mouse there and then we're going to hit, well, well, we'll look it up here just to show you. Declaration. Command B. So Command B will take us to the declaration. That was the declaration of the variable. You can do the same thing with you know, methods or classes. Um, 
And that's it for the navigation piece that I really wanted to cover for today. I just want to quickly look at a few things in the editor as well. The uh, we're going to look at you know pieces of shortcuts available to uh, to be able to nav to edit the code to actually interact with it um, a little bit more effectively. So these will all show up here as well. Um, for example, if I if I want to find out what type is, let's say we were looking at post before. So let's see escape. I, I can't tell from this what the type is of this variable. Um, so in order to determine that, there is actually a uh, type info, which you can see here is. I always get confused by the. Uh, pictures for the, the keys in OSX, but it's a control shift P or again you can always just look it up and it will show you that's a string. There's a similar uh, a similar function available for getting information about errors. So if we change this to get path Z we would like to be able to determine what that error is. So similarly Error description is command F1. That will tell us what the what the interpreter is saying is the problem with this uh, with this code here. So you can get the, get the benefits of the static typing faster, obviously, if you can use your IDE to determine what the problems are in your code. The um, really basic one that I didn't know for a while in OSX was just how to bounce around like holding control left and right and next or windows um, option left right will bounce back and forth between words if you're never touching your mouse you're going to want to be able to navigate around a little bit faster so I think that's an important one to know if you don't already know that uh, similarly you can scroll up and down to read through code by holding command pressing up and down I don't know if any of these are specific to IntelliJ, but I, I find that I use them a lot, and they're worth mentioning if you don't know already. If you're reading through code, you don't need to use your cursor to go through it. You just need to be able to scroll up and down and look. That will leave your cursor in place, so you could go down, look at something a little bit lower, maybe you know a method implementation, um, just to get the details of it while holding your, your spot at the cursor. Uh, critical one that everybody needs to know, duplicate line. Duplicate line or block. So it's command D. You can see I executed it there. If I want to remove that line. It's command Y. I don't know if it's actually... I'm not too sure what that one's called. But anyways, command Y will remove the line. So duplicate, remove. And then... Uh, Command forward slash will comment out anything that you're you've selected. So you can quickly comment out blocks and uncomment them. It only works with the forward slash, I believe. There may be a shortcut for um, doing the other style of commenting. Comment with block comment. So it's shift, is it shift control forward slash? Yeah. So we can do block comments as well. So you can see there, I didn't know that shortcut, but I was able to find it really quickly, never touching the mouse. Um, I think that's it for today. Oh, I, I did just want to cover one more, actually. The, I wanted to show you move line and move statement. Um, so move line down. You can see there is shift option up and down you can swap places you can do it with statements as well um, just by going on the first line of statement oh, maybe I'm actually using wrong command move statement up or down command shift up down so you can see I'm moving the entire block here the form params we're going to swap places with params swap places with IP so if you're if you're rearranging your code uh, for readability, for example, to group things together, 
you know, refactoring after you do the work, that uh, that's a nice one to know. It's a lot faster than copying and pasting. Um, finally, the refactorings are, if you're using a language that has refactoring support inside IntelliJ, then there are shortcuts for that. I'm not going to cover them all because, you know, if you're using Java, there's, there's a significant quantity of them. But you know that you can always look them up. So, you know, for example, we can just we can extract this method as a method here. So we'll apply extract method from refactorings. Extract method. We'll make it a class method. Um, and we'll call it. I don't even know what this is here. Um, X forward for IP. So there we just you know replaced replace that with the method by using the extract method. All the other refactorings will be available to find and you can obviously get the shortcuts from there. There's only a few in Scala, but if you're using Java, you know, having quick access to all the refactorings uh, would be pretty pretty critical. Maybe we have move as well, for example. Um, so that's that's everything that I wanted to cover for today. Uh, these are just a quick selection of shortcuts that I think that you need to be able to get around in the IDE without using the mouse. I, I don't think you ever need to use the mouse in IntelliJ. You can find anything that you want to do quickly and easily, again, by looking it up with Command Shift A. That's, that's the one right there that's going to show you everything you need to be able to learn how to get around using the shortcuts, um, even if you don't yet know them. We like to how to navigate around by selecting different um, different windows in the IDE here, in sections. So looking at the project, uh, how to get back to the code. We looked at the switcher, which is also you know crucial for being able to navigate through the files that you have open, and uh, for being able to navigate to different sections of the IDE as well by using the number. It's control tab again. That's one that I'll mention because it's it's an important one. I think uh, we looked at you know closing editor windows and then how to do some editing by getting you know, type info, get error description, uh, moving around, uh, moving lines around, moving statements around, applying refactorings, uh, and commenting as well. So that's that should be it, it really that you need. Now you're ready to go. So if you have any comments or feedback, please let me know. Uh, I would be interested in doing a few more learning videos in the future, especially around TDD, because it took me a while to figure out how to do it right. Thank you very much.